Good morning, everyone. It's such a joy and a privilege to be in God's house, especially when we are going through this pandemic again, the lockdown again, um, and we're at uncertain times. But in the midst of all of that, all we can say is our God is good. So as our team leads us into a time of praise and worship, let's just open our hearts. हम अपने दिल को खोले और अपने आप को जांचे जैसे कि हम लोग परमेश्वर की हुजूरी में स्तुति और आराधना करते हैं.
Jesus, we thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Blessed be your name. Can we say, Blessed be your name?
Perfection could never run it. You give what we don't deserve, and you take the broken thing and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Zion's for.
Oh, 
Sabole Teri Mercy. Teri Mercy. with that awesome time of worship. I believe God is going to do something awesome in our midst and God is going to give us breakthroughs and he's going to give us miracles in the midst of all our chaos. I believe that Parmeshwar will give us a miracle, a miracle, a miracle, a miracle. We will go through whatever time we are going to go through, Parmeshwar will go through it and there will not be any problems in our lives. I just want to welcome all of you who are joining our service for the very first time, wherever you are. We just want to thank you for joining us. Um, and I pray that God would give you all the blessings and the desires of your heart. I want to welcome you all, those who are in the first time in this online service. My prayer is that the Lord will complete your desires and the Lord will complete your desires. Well, if there's anyone who's watching us and they're celebrating their birthdays and their anniversaries this week, we just want to pronounce God's blessing on each and every one of you. Uh, even during these times, may God keep you safe and may God bless you with everything you desire. If anyone has made your birthday or your birthday in this week, I would like to thank you for your blessings on your life and your life. Um, I just want to make a couple of announcements as we go forward in the service. Every Friday we get together for a time of prayer and I believe during this time, you know, we are going through, it is very important that we kneel down and we just spend some time in God's presence. In this time, I believe that we are going to take a look at the Lord and in the Parmeshwar, we are going to put all our wishes. So if you want to be a part of this prayer, you know, we have our Ignite prayer that happens every Friday from 6.45 onwards till 8 o'clock. Every Shukravar ko humara Ignite prayer hota hai, jo 6.45 se 8 pache tak hai. Agar aap iske bhaagin hona chaate hai, niche jo diye wai numbers hai, un par hume contact ki jay ga. Aur agar koi prarthana ki vishya bhi ho, aap humare saath baat yega, hum log zarur prarthana karenge aur parmeshwar hume uttar dee ga. 
Well, this is the time to give to the Lord and gift for the expansion of God's kingdom. I understand during this time it's, uh, you know, very difficult. But in the midst of all that, I believe God is going to bless each and every one of us. When we give towards the kingdom, God is going to bless you hundredfold. And I believe that all those people who sow into the kingdom, you know, God is going to take every account of that and He's going to give you His blessings from heaven. Abhi dene ka samay hai aur जो कुछ भी परमेश्वर आपके हृदय में देता है वो आप परमेश्वर के राज्य की बढ़ोतरी के लिए दे और जब हम परमेश्वर के राज्य में देते हैं और बोते हैं परमेश्वर हमें दुगनी आशीषों से हमें वापस लौटा कर देता है आइए हम अपने उस दशवांश और अपने उस भेंट को अपने हाथ में ले और जैसे मैं प्रार्थना करती हूँ मैं एक आशीष को आपके ऊपर घोषणा करती हूँ फादर गॉड आई जस्ट वॉन declare god's blessings upon all those people who are going to be generously giving towards the kingdom lord i pray that you bless them abundantly and i pray that whatever they give and they sow into the kingdom you will bless them hundredfold parmeshwar main prarthana karti hu jitne log aaj aapke rajya mein bote hain parmeshwar unhe 100 guna zyada parmeshwar aashishon se bhar dena parmeshwar nor i pray that let them not have any problems in their finances in their household Lord I pray that you will multiply things in their house let there be no shortcomings in anyone's household I pray in Jesus name I pray amen Well it's my joy and privilege once again to be welcoming Pastor Rob Morris from Newma Church Australia uh, he is a very dear friend of ours uh, not only of mine and Pastor Marlowe's but also Welcome Home Churches we love his heart his care for this nation and how much he loves the people of India so let's keep our hearts open let's keep our bibles open let's keep our journals open because i believe god is going to speak through him and speak in to each one of our hearts aaj mera saubhagya hai ki main pastor rob morris ka swagat karu hum apne dilon ko khole hum apne bible ko khole journals ko khole taki jo kuch bhi parmeshwar humse baat cheet karna chahta hai uske dwara hum log aashishit ho hello welcome home church it's so good to be with you again you know you're so much in our hearts at the moment uh, here at newman church in melbourne and i'm so looking forward to the lifting of restrictions in delhi that will allow me to travel again and see you face to face rather than on the video screen but it is an honor and a privilege for me to do this today we continue to pray for you and for all the people in india in this extended covid season it's really been a difficult time for uh, all of us in the world but in particular in your nation right now and we're praying with you that god will bring this to an end and bring healing across your land and indeed around the world it's been too long since my last visit but we remain confident that god is in control even when we don't understand the circumstances and even though things haven't been good we believe that god can turn any situation around even though there's been a lot of sadness around the world Uh, we've also at the same time heard of some great testimonies of God's hand of blessing through this time and through this season i encourage you to stay close to jesus support one another and be a blessing wherever you go uh, i'm believing soon i'll be able to travel and by 2022 we do hope to have teams on the ground in delhi and other parts of india again I want to encourage you today with a short message about standing firm in the freedom that you have in Jesus Christ. And I hope that this will be an encouragement to you even in difficult times to hold on to press in to God. If you have a Bible, turn with me to Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 to 16. I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, "I want to know Christ Yes to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and brothers and sisters I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it but one thing I do forgetting what is behind and straining on towards what is ahead I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards 
in Christ Jesus. Let me ask you this question. What does tomorrow look like for you today? Now you might first think, well, we shouldn't be really worrying too much about tomorrow and just focus on getting through the day. I mean, didn't Jesus say in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, do not worry about tomorrow because every day has enough trouble for itself. Now, there is some truth in that in terms of not allowing our thoughts to dwell on or worry about or fear what tomorrow might bring. And I agree that we should not be speculating about what might go wrong tomorrow or let fear become the focus as we look to our future. In fact, Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, God specifically tells us not to fear, for he is with us. Yeah, so worrying about the issues of today or tomorrow will not serve any great purpose in our lives. But I don't believe by this that the scripture means that we should ignore the future or, or not think about the future or think about tomorrow because we're called to press into the fullness of God's purpose in our lives. So in that sense, we're called to press in to tomorrow with faith and with expectation. Now this is really important for us to understand because while there are aspects of our past and our present that can help set the course for our future, the, real, the reality is that God's plans for us are not bound to the past. You see, there are things in, in our past that are not always positive experiences. You know, things that you might have in your past you may not be proud of. But you can't dwell too much on that because we cannot change yesterday. But if we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, and if, if we've repented of our sin and put our trust in him, then we can live by faith into every day that is ahead of us. You know, God even says to us in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19, he says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. You see, the reality is that we cannot let our past experiences influence our future. If we do, we'll regret it. If you've had things in your life that have not gone according to plan, if you don't leave them behind, they may well impact on what is ahead. The Apostle Paul says, forgetting what is behind. Now, here's my encouragement to you. Do not let any of the downs or any of the failures of yesterday dictate the potential for success and blessing in your tomorrow. You see, the reality is that we're all human and we all stumble and we all fail at times. Sometimes we make mistakes in our relationships. Sometimes we fail our friends or we say the wrong things or we act in ways that are contrary to the way we know God really wants us to act. And sometimes when don't, things don't go well in our lives, we can feel alone and we can feel isolated. But I want to tell you something. That is a lie from the enemy. Because the truth is, even when you think you're on your own, you never are. Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. At all times, God is with you. And everything that you go through can actually shape your life, help shape your life, and lead you in the outworking of God's plan for you and your family, even if sometimes you don't even realize it. Now, of course, looking back is really important sometimes. The blessings of the past can actually be great encouragement builders for our future. You know, I, as a father, I, I, I often uh, look back and 
uh, over the time of raising my children, and, and now, of course, I have three grandchildren, and, and, and I thank God that I was able to be a good and consistent example to my own children and to see them grow up in the ways of the Lord. And now it's a great joy to see them uh, instilling those same principles in their children, my grandchildren. And, and, and I often thank God for the things that I've been able to do over 40 years as a minister of the gospel. Because by God's grace, I've been able to see some elements of success in my life and ministry. And I've seen many people's lives touched through my service to him. You know, good memories are a great blessing. In fact, last week I, I was up at a national conference here with the Australian Christian Churches in, um, in Australia, um, up on the Gold Coast, and I bumped into a, a guy who was in my church many, many years ago, over 30 years ago, probably 35 years ago now, and he reminded me that I was the one who gave him uh, an opportunity to minister and he became uh, my youth pastor and went on and now he's actually serving not only running his own church but uh, involved in other areas of the Australian Christian Church ministry and he attributes it to uh, my influence at that time in his life. Now I know many other people have influenced his life over the years but it's a great blessing sometimes when you look back on the past. So good memories are a great blessing. But if I look back too much, if I look back too often, I will probably remember things that I would rather forget. And then I'll start focusing on the mistakes I made along the way too. And if we allow ourselves to dwell there, our adversary, the devil, will try to use our failures against us. You see, the mind can be a battlefield if we let it be. And if we dwell there, it won't be long before we start questioning even the good things that God has done in our lives. Now let me just say again that it doesn't matter what is in your past, God is greater than your failure. And he's lifted you up out of the past and he has set you on a plan and a purpose for your future. I refuse to let my future be dictated by the things in my past that were not so good. And I do that for two reasons. Number one, because as I said before, we cannot change the past. But number two, and probably more importantly, God does not hold my past failures against me. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, For there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't deny that I've stumbled along the way, uh, but I will not be defined by my stumbling. I take hold of who I am in Christ Jesus. Psalm 37, verse 23 to 24 says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. And though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Our past does not define us. It does not dictate what God has in store for our tomorrow. So the truth is this. There is more ahead of us than there is behind us. And it's not about how long we live and things like that. It's just simply the truth of the fact that everything in our life is building us towards God's plans and purposes, both now and for eternity. There is more ahead of us than there is behind us. This is what the Apostle Paul is talking about when he says in his letter to the Philippians, forgetting what is behind. You see, the Apostle Paul is a great example to us of someone who failed God. In his ignorance, he zealously persecuted the church. He even had believers put to death. But once he had that revelation of Christ in his life, he did not focus on where he had been, but focused on where God was calling him to go. When Paul's revelation 
of Christ truly came to him, it transformed his life and actions from that day forward. Now imagine for a moment if Paul had said, but I was an enemy of God. I was an enemy of the church. I, I persecuted Christians. How can I be of any use to God? You know, Paul could have drifted through the rest of his life, maybe secure in the fact of his newfound salvation, but scared to act on God's plan for his life because of what he had done in his past. But he didn't do that. He chose to serve God in spite of his past failure. And because of that, the word of the Lord spread through the known world like wildfire. What about the Apostle Peter? You know, he, he denied Christ in his greatest hour of need. Not once, not twice, but three times. I can imagine the Apostle Peter thinking to himself, well, maybe Jesus can forgive me for failing him, but how could he ever trust me and use me again? But you know, Jesus' reply was in John chapter 21, was to have Peter confirm his love for him three times. It's interesting, three times, because he denied him three times. And then he released him to be the shepherd of his people. Now, here's the truth for each and every one of us. You can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. You know, sometimes when I travel through airports, I notice that some people seem to have a lot of luggage. And sometimes I wonder if they really need everything that they have with them for the trip. Or, or is there some stuff that they could have just left behind? If you carry things with you that you really should leave behind, all you do is weigh yourself down and make it harder to reach your destination. So here's the question. What are you carrying today that you need to leave behind as you look towards God and God's future for your life? This is what God says about you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, Jeremiah is actually referring to the plans of restoration for the Jews in exile in Babylon. He's talking about things that had been lost and were to be restored as the people returned to the land. And I believe that that's what God wants to say to us today, that through Jesus Christ, he has made a way for you to live for him, even if you've been like feeling like in exile. The fact is that you might fall at times. The fact is that you might fail, but it does not change what he has done for you. He's a God of restoration. He is a God for your future, and he does not dwell on what you have done, but what you can do. God's unique and individual plan will be different for each and every one of us, but for all of us, his plans are to bless us and give us a hope and a future. Romans chapter 8, 1, I, wrote, I, I read it earlier, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. You know, there was a song back in the 1990s that went around the world, so some of you may even remember it even uh, over there in Delhi. And the band's name was Chumba Wumba. Yeah, I know, a weird name, but um, back in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s, uh, that's what happened. Some of the words of their song, their most famous song that went around the world was, I get knocked down, but I get up again. If you've lost sight of what God has done for you, then all you're seeing right now may be failure and disappointment. 
But if you will lift your eyes, you will see the glory of God and you will be able to get back up again. Listen to this great verse of encouragement from Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore, since we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. I, I, I love the thought that comes through here to, to throw off anything that can hold us back. What do you need to throw off today? As I close today, let me read some scriptures that might just encourage you to rise up and take hold of God's purposes for your life. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. The Apostle Paul says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on to, towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. One more. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 11. The Lord will guide you continually giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. And you will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Let me pray for you as we close. So Heavenly Father, I pray for all my friends at Welcome Home Church, all those who are watching this online, and I would ask, Lord God, that you will just let a restoration take place in the hearts of anyone who has felt that they have perhaps lost their way somewhat and have perhaps not taken hold of the fullness of the promises and the blessings that you have. Father, we declare again that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and you have called us upwards and onwards and we take hold of your plan and your purpose and your promises for our lives. Amen. Now let me just say uh, as I close that if you're watching this and perhaps you're searching a little bit about faith and life in faith and who Jesus is, I know there's people at Welcome Home Church who are there to help you and there's probably going to be a way for them on screen for you to contact them. Please do so. Please follow up on what God might be beginning to stir in your heart. Well, God bless you all, and I look forward to seeing you soon.